Hello and welcome back to the course. So in the last session, we simulated the purchase of 800 stickers and checked how many unique stickers we get. And in this session, we will now simulate um, this process many times. So we have many simulations where we buy 800 stickers. And by doing so, you would like to answer questions like, how many unique stickers can we get on average? So it's more kind of a probabilistic or statistical approach, actually. And um, yeah, for the start, um, let's start smoothly. And uh, we start with 10 simulations. So next, uh, we are copying our code from our last session. It's um, this one here. So we have an empty list called album. And then we simulated the purchase of 800 stickers. And uh, we uh, paste, paste it in the sticker if it's not in the album. If it is in the album, we did nothing. And here in the end, we are calculating the length of the album. So we're answering the question, how many unique stickers do we have actually? And now what we introduce here, we are creating an empty list results. And there we are storing um, the length of each album for each simulation. And then we are starting the simulation for M in range sims. So sims is 10, we have 10 simulations. And 10 times we are simulating the process of buying 800 stickers. And uh, in the end, we are appending re the result, for example, 451 unique stickers. We are appending it to our empty list results. And in the end, we should end up with uh, a list with 10, 10 results, actually. So let's execute the cells. And let's inspect the code. Ah, OK, so we have yeah, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 results. But actually, it's 10 times 451. So um, what happened here? It's not by chance, because we did one mistake. So you can see here, we have the random seed. And the random seed is inside our second for loop. So for each simulation, we produce actually the same result. So we have 10 times the same result. So we are, what we have to do is we cross out here the random seed. So it's just a comment. It's not um, doing nothing if we execute the cell. And we introduce it here outside the for loop. And now we should get different results. Let's check. All right, so now we have 10 different results here. So we have 451, 446, and so on. So now we simulated, or we have 10 different simulations. And I want to highlight here some more uh, possible mistakes we can make here. So we have here a nested loop. That means we have a loop that uh, yeah, simulates um, our 10 simulations. And then we have another loop that simulates our stickers. And we have to make sure that we make the right indents. Here we create actually our 800 stickers for one simulation. And uh, if we do the mistake and do not make an indent here, then we are getting an, getting an error. So we have to make here an indent for the whole nested loop. And then it works again. And also, I want to highlight here in the end, we are appending each, each length or each simulation we are appending to our empty results list. And if we forget the indent here, so the appending of the length of the album is outside the second for loop. Let's check what we get. And we are getting only one result because we are only appending the last uh, simulation. So we do not append the result of the first, second, third, fourth, and so on. We are only appending the very last simulation. So and therefore, we have to put this function here or this process into the for loop. So for each simulation, we are appending the result of the simulation to our results list. That's very important. And what we can do now is we can further increase the number of simulations. So we copy the code here. It's the uh, same as above. And we set simulations to 1,000. So by doing so, we further reduce the impact of randomness, um, the so-called random noise. 
And this is important when we later calculate statistics like mean, median, and so on. So when we're getting larger numbers and a larger amount of simulations, our statistics like mean or median of all simulation, they are getting more reliable actually. And um, there's less volatility in our results. And that's, that's good. So let's execute 1000 simulations. And um, yeah, to make a sanity check, we have a look how many results we have. So I would expect 1000. Yes, that's also correct. So in the last two seconds, uh, we actually bought 800,000 stickers, which is quite a lot actually, and <laughs> quite expensive if you ask me. And uh, yeah, let's move now to the calculation of statistics. So we have different statistics. We can um, calculate the minimum of all of our results. We can calculate the maximum. We can calculate the mean and the median. And yeah, let's start with um, the minimum. So we have 1,000 simulations and the minimum result is 418. So the worst case, uh, if to say, is one, if we get, if you buy 800 stickers, we get 418 unique stickers. And uh, consequently, the maximum is 471. So in the best case, we have 471 unique stickers and only uh, 229 uh, duplicates. So calculating the mean for the mean, yeah, there's not, not a direct um, function here in basic Python, like mean or max. So we have to calculate the sum over all results and divide it by the length. And then we get the mean, 442.44. And we calculate the median. So this is actually the, the formula we created in our um, basic session. So I don't want to go into detail now regarding this one here. And the medium is 443. So what is then the intuition behind the median? So we can say that it's uh, the chance of 50%. So if you simulate 1,000 times our purchase, the chance is 50% that we get more than 443 and 50% that it's getting worse than 443 unique stickers. So that's, that's actually the intuition behind the median. So on average, we can say that if we buy 800 stickers, we get approximately 442 unique stickers. So ex expectation is actually to get yeah, roughly 442 stickers. And um, yeah, typically maybe in, in most cases, visualization helps more than just some numbers. And um, yeah, therefore let's um, make a plot. And before we have to import uh, matplotlib.pyplot as PLT, and we set matplotlib inline. So we need that in Jupyter notebook. And as a matter of taste, we use the Seaborn style. That's not, not uh, necessary, but um, that's just, just uh, my taste actually. All right, so and for our purposes, we should use an histogram and um, we pass our results list. So there are 1000 um, results stored in our list. We pass it to PLT hist and we set bins equal to the maximum minus the minimum plus one. So what, what does it mean? So the range of our results is between 418 and 471. And for each possible or realized outcome, we wanna have one bar. And that's why we say, okay, we have uh, the amount of bins should be 471 minus 118 plus one. So that's uh, for each possible outcome, we have one bar. Then we can also set some X labels. So it's uh, the number of unique stickers. We can set a name for Y label number of occurrences. We can also set a title, but that's not too important here. And let's see what we get here. So we have kind of a, yeah, not, not really bell shaped. For a bell shaped curve, we need more simulations. But um, yeah, you can see here um, the probability distribution of um, if we buy 800 stickers. So we should end up somewhere between 420 and 460. And it's uh, most likely that we end up with yeah, 445, 450 about. And I also included here PLT V lines. So it's a vertical line 
at the mean. So you can see here, here's the mean of what we calculated before 442. So, but that gives us a good impression um, yeah, of what we can expect actually. And if we further increase the number of simulations, let's put 10,000 here. So we have 10,000 results. Ah, you can see here it takes a bit of time. So we have a lot of calculations here for the machine. That's actually the reason why later we use uh, the NumPy package, because it's much faster than the Python standard library and all the for loops and so on. Okay, now we are finished and we can update and we can update our graph. Huh. Ah, okay, so we have also to update our max and min to adjust the bins. That's too fast. So now the minimum is 407. Maximum is still 471. Yeah, mean doesn't change too much. Median also. Okay, now let's update the graph again. And yeah, now it's looking more bell-shaped. So of course we would expect some, some kind of bell-shaped probability distribution. And um, yeah, if we further increase the number of simulation, it's getting more and more bell-shaped actually. So this is it for the time being. We finished the session here and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And in the next session, we are going to automate our code by writing a function. So see you in the next session. Bye.